So in our final video on this subject, we're going to talk about energy analysis of rolling without slipping. Chancellor's theorem tells us that the total kinetic energy has two parts. Energy of translation of the center mass and pure rotation about an axis through the center mass. In general, omega, the speed at which it rotates, is completely independent of the speed at which the center mass moves. For instance, we can have an object that's spinning very fast, pure spin. Omega might be very large. and the speed of the center mass is zero. This would be an example of a grinding wheel or circular saw. On the other hand, we might have an object that's just sliding. Pure translation. In this case, omega is zero but V center mass might be 20 meters per second, for instance. So knowing omega doesn't tell you anything about V center mass in general, and knowing V center mass doesn't tell you anything about omega. That means that if you have this equation, you have two unknowns. This one and this one. So if that's the only equation you have, you're not going to be able to work the problem. You have to know a relationship between these two, or you have to have another equation that tells you something. For instance, if you know in this case that V is zero, that's gone, then yes, I can solve for omega if I know the total energy. On the other hand, if it's this case, so this term is gone, then yes, I can solve for V center mass. A special case where the speed of the center mass and the angular speed about the center mass are not independent, where they are connected, is rolling without slipping. Because when they rolls without slipping, if this thing is going really fast and you put it on a surface, when it quits spinning without slipping, this omega will change. And this thing will begin to move sideways, giving it some center mass speed. They are not independent anymore. This is called the no-slip condition, which we have already covered. The no-slip condition says that the speed of the center mass is equal to the angular speed times the radius. So if you know this distance and you know this speed, which is the same as the speed of the spinning disk, then you know this. It's equal to omega r. Now what that means is, is that you can go in and either eliminate the center mass speed and find omega, or you can eliminate omega and find the center mass speed. If you do that in our energy, then you get either this equation where I've replaced omega with V over R and I brought the R squared under the I center mass, or you'll get this equation where I've eliminated V center of mass with R omega. Now look at these two things because it's somewhat interesting. Here you're looking at it more as a rotation problem. I know it's doing both, but you're looking at it. And what this looks like is treating this kind of like this was the moment of inertia of a hoop. So it's like the energy, if it was just a hoop, plus some energy because their particles are not a hoop and they're moving around. Up here, it's as if you're treating this is some new effective mass that's moving, some extra mass. This is more like a translation way of looking at the problem. Now it's not, I understand that. There's really the energy of translation and this is some additional energy you're adding, but it looks like it's an effective mass. All of the moment of inertias look like some gamma times m r squared. And so when you divide by r squared, you're basically getting this gamma times this mass. For a cylinder, it's a half of the mass. 
for a solid sphere it's two fifths of the mass but it looks somehow like the divide by r squared is making it some effective gamma times m mass times v squared now you can factor the v center mass out and you can then play with this thing and find that or you can find omega so this is the standard thing you're going to do energy analysis just like you've done in the past potential to kinetic and so forth but you have to make sure that you calculate the total kinetic and you have to realize that you have the velocity the center mass and omega you got to eliminate one of them you may want to know how fast it's going at the bottom of the hill in which case you're looking for v you might want to know how fast it's rotating at the bottom of the hill in which case you'll want to do omega what you're doing is taking energy and substituting in the no slip condition all right in the next videos, I'll actually work some problems for you.